What's going on guys? Today we're going to be going over how to optimize your DAISY settings. DAISY is of course in an alpha state, so it's nowhere near optimized, but there are quite a few things you can do to get the game looking and performing a lot better than the default settings. To get started, we're going to go ahead and tackle the in-game video settings. To access those, you need to click on configure from the main menu, and then video. Up at the very top here, we have overall quality, which we're going to leave a custom. We have rendering resolution, which we're also going to leave by default for now because we'll be changing that later on. Of course, we have brightness and gamma, which are completely optional and preferential. And then we have V-Sync, and I personally recommend disabling V-Sync unless you know you're going to have screen tearing or some other issue ahead of time. And as always, if you have any issues after disabling V-Sync, you can simply re-enable it later on. We have a couple of options down here at the bottom of the video panel, but we're going to go ahead with the first one, so let's open up our user interface. At the top, we have resolution, which is of course the resolution you want the game to run at. We have size, which is pertaining to the in-game panels and the font size within those panels, which we'll go over shortly. And then we have aspect ratio, and this is gonna be the first option we make our changes to. If you have a standard 1080p widescreen monitor, you're going to wanna to select 16 by nine. It's really important that you have the proper aspect ratio selected because otherwise you will not be able to select the proper resolution afterwards. So now that we've changed our aspect ratio, we're going to go ahead to the resolution and we're going to try to find 1920 by 1080. Of course, you want your resolution to be the same as your native desktop resolution. And if you're unsure about what this setting is, you can simply right click on your desktop, select screen resolution, and see what your monitor's default settings are. Back to the user interface panel, we're going to go ahead and select our size settings. And for this, I prefer very small and I'm going to show you exactly why. If you happen to choose large or even very large, your text is going to get pretty huge in game, your panels are going to be large in the way, and just generally it doesn't look very clean to me. Likewise, your in-game panels are going to have a large font size, and the font size within the lower left corner of the screen when you're running around is going to be quite large as well. To show you the difference here, we're going to change this back to very small. As you can see, things look a lot cleaner, they're out of the way, and again, this is just a personal preference, so set this setting as you like. So I'm going to change mine to very small, and that's going to wrap it up for the user interface settings. So let's go ahead and back out to the video settings. Now that we have the proper resolution set, we're going to go ahead and change our rendering resolution. And you want to set this to 100%. This isn't going to make any immediate changes, but it's going to get rid of the majority of the blur that you see in game and overall just make it look a lot more clear during your gameplay. At this point, we need to go ahead and restart the game to make sure that all of our settings have taken effect. So let's do that now. Once your game is loaded back up, we're going to go back into our video settings. This time we're going to click on textures right below user interface. At the top, we have video memory, and no matter what hardware you're using to run DayZ, you want to set this to auto for maximum performance. Within this panel, we also have our texture settings. My personal preference is high. You can set these to whatever you like. For example, here's the lowest settings versus the highest. There's quite a difference there visually. You can fiddle with these and figure out which one you like the most. I'm going to choose high for mine. That's it for textures, let's move on to the quality panel. At the top we have objects, and we're actually going to edit this outside of the game settings later on, and I'll explain that when the time comes. We also have our terrain settings, and if you'd like, you can set this to very low. This will remove the majority of the ground foliage. It could possibly give you a competitive advantage as well as a slight performance increase. However, it looks a lot more bland and lifeless compared to the other settings. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference between very high, high, normal, or even low. Again, this is going to be a personal preference. I prefer to have mine on high, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I also recommend disabling clouds and shadows in this menu. It's not going to completely remove them from the game, but it will give you a significant performance boost. This is what the clouds look like enabled in DayZ. There's a lot of movement here, and the game has to render these in. Likewise, here's the shading down by the fence line and the barn you can see down the hill here. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and disable these in the in-game settings. Now this happens to be a particularly sunny day in Chernaris. Normally there are still plenty of clouds present, but today it's just a clear sky. Likewise, down by the barn, you can see that the shadows have significantly been decreased. This will have a visual impact on the game. However, it could give you a competitive advantage being able to spot your enemies more easily, as well as give you a huge performance boost, which will aid you in combat. That's gonna wrap it up for the quality settings. Let's go ahead into our final panel, which is rendering. And what you want to do when you load this panel up is go into every single one of these settings and turn it down to its lowest possible setting or disable it entirely. There's only one setting we're going to make any changes to in here, and that's going to be edge smoothing. And you have three choices. You have FXAA, which obviously does not look that great. 
you have SMAA. And of course, you can also leave this disabled. My computer has no issues running SMAA on high, so I usually leave that on, but this is gonna be up to you what you like, so go ahead and change this to your preference. And that's it for the in-game video settings, but before we close the game down one more time, I want you to back out to the configure panel, one before video, and click on gameplay. There's a slider in here called head bob, and I highly recommend turning this down. The reason being is whenever you're playing in first person, head bob is really shaky and it's almost nauseating. Versus off where the gameplay is much more smooth. Now this is only gonna impact you if you play in first person, however, you never know when you need it, so just go ahead and turn that off. I also recommend turning the field of view slider on this panel all the way up. If you leave the field of view slider on the default setting or even lower than the maximum setting, all you're doing is limiting your view in game. So there's really no benefit in having it lower than the maximum setting. Of course, this is up to you to change it as you like, but I would recommend turning that up. And that's it for the in-game settings. At this point, we can go ahead and close our game down again to make sure everything saves. Once you close the game down this time, you want to locate your My Documents folder. This may be on your desktop or in your start menu. When you open up My Documents, there should be a DAISY folder, and there should be three files inside. You'll have DAISY, a DAISY profile with your name in it, and a third one we're not worried about. We're going to edit these with Notepad. To do that, you want to right-click DAISY.CFG, select Open With, and then select Notepad. If you don't see Notepad, there should be a More Options button, and Notepad will be in there. Once you open this, you'll get a text file on your desktop. I'm gonna blow this up a little bit so it's easier to see. Again, we're in daisy.cfg. There's a lot of lines of text in here, but we're only worried about two. If you scroll down toward the middle, you'll find GPU max frames ahead and GPU detected frames ahead. And what we're gonna do here is change the numbers at the end of these lines to one. So go ahead and change max frames ahead to one and do the same for detected frames ahead. And that's all we're gonna do with this file. So go ahead and save it and close it. Now we're gonna do the same thing for our daisy profile. When you click on this, it should open right up into a text file, but if not, just select Open With and Notepad a second time. This has a lot more lines of text, but we're gonna to scroll to the very bottom and we're looking for these four lines here. Scene complexity, shadow distance, view distance, and preferred object view distance. Editing these four lines will have the most significant performance impact in your game. For scene complexity, I have mine set to 500,000, which is half the default. You can set this lower for more of a performance boost, but know that doing so will result in a lower player rendering distance. For shadow distance, mine's set to 50. I'm gonna make a quick note here. If this setting is lower than 200, it will result in water rendering and non-transparent, meaning the edges of fonts will be a straight line like this, rather than the more natural looking appearance such as this. This isn't that big of a deal to me, but if it is to you, it's worth noting. Back to our daisy file, we're gonna edit our view distance. I have mine set to 1,500, which is half the default. If you're lucky, the longest shot you'll be making in daisy is 1,000 meters, so 1,500 is plenty. I'm gonna change my preferred object view distance to 1,500 as well. And that's it for your profile settings. This is what my settings look like. I've messed around a lot and I found this to be the perfect balance of quality and performance for me. You can again mess with these as much as you need to to find that perfect balance on your end. Once you're done with that, go ahead and save it and close it down. Locate your My Documents folder one more time and find your Daisy folder within. Instead of opening it, this time we're gonna right click Daisy, select Properties, and at the bottom of this window, there will be a checkbox that says read only. Make sure there's a check mark in this box. Hit apply at the bottom. Hit OK or yes to any prompts that may pop up. And hit OK at the bottom one more time to save. The reason we're doing this is so the Daisy cannot overwrite any of the changes we just made to the settings. Know by doing this that you will not be able to change your in game settings in Daisy permanently. If you need to change your Daisy settings, simply right click, go to properties, uncheck read only. Launch the game while leaving this window open in the background, make your changes, close Daisy, and then you can just hit read only and apply again. Next, you wanna go ahead and open up Steam and find Daisy in the library tab. Right click Daisy and select properties. In the general tab, there's a button that says set launch options. Click that and you should get a window that looks like this. These are my launch options for Daisy and I'll be going over each of these. I'll also have all of these listed in the description below the video. The first three launch options, no vid, no pause, and no splash, stop Daisy from having any kind of an intro video or opening scene. That way I get straight to the main menu and I can get in game quicker. Next up is your CPU count. And this is the amount of cores that your processor has. If you're unsure how many cores your processor has, you can click on either the Intel or the AMD link in the description below and search for your processor. Max mem is the amount of RAM that your PC has, and this is entered in megabytes. For example, I have 16 gigabytes. I'll show you how to get your number shortly. Xthreads is the amount of threads that your processor has, 
and you should be able to find this in the same link as you did your course. Max VRAM is the amount of gigabytes of VRAM that your graphics card has. You should be able to find this on your manufacturer's website. There are 1,024 megabytes in a gigabyte, so go ahead and open up a calculator app and multiply 1024 by the number of gigabytes of RAM you have. For example, I have 16. You have eight gigabytes of RAM, you want to multiply by eight, and you'll get your number. So if you have eight gigabytes of VRAM, you want to put 8192. You can repeat these steps to find out how many megabytes of VRAM you have. If you own an NVIDIA graphics card, you can right click on your desktop and select NVIDIA control panel. Second from the top, click Manage 3D Settings. Click on the Program Settings tab and find DAISY in the drop down menu. You want to scroll about halfway down until you see an option called Multi Display slash Mixed GPU Acceleration. You want to change this to Single Display Performance Mode. Below that should be an option called Power Management Mode. You want to change this to Prefer Maximum Performance. Be careful about using your scroll wheel while in these settings because it can scroll through your programs instead of using the actual scroll bar like it's supposed to. So before you close this down, just make sure that the changes you made have saved correctly. If you update your graphics card drivers, you may need to go back and change these settings again afterward. And that's it. Daisy should now be performing better than ever while still looking great. If you have any questions or anything to add, feel free to comment. If after following all the steps in this video, you're still not happy with the frame rate you're getting, you can lower your resolution, lower your texture settings, lower your terrain settings, and as a last resort, you can even lower your Daisy profile settings even further. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.